Rub up your engines! Ralph Rav 4 says, my question is about a Toyota dealer trying to get me to pay for a wheel alignment as early as 10,000 miles. Recommend this to a dealer trying to rip me off. People are always trying to sell stuff. That's how the world works these days. I remember when I was young, the advertisements on TV for shampoo say, lather, repeat. Well, you're going to use up twice as much shampoo, right? Nobody does that anymore. It's just a scam to try to get you to use up the shampoo twice as fast. Same thing with that. If you live in a horrendous area where there's lots of potholes, maybe you'll have to. But, I mean, I've got cars that are 15 years old. I haven't had an alignment on them in 10 years, and they still go down the road perfectly fine, so I don't care, you know? If it's not shaking or pulling or everything's wearing out odd, you can just leave the thing alone. People are always trying to sell you stuff. That's just, you know, a gimmick when they give you these service intervals. At 10,000 miles, do this. At 20,000 miles, do that. Just a bunch of made-up stuff to get you to come in and sell you things. <laughs> That's why I make these videos, to help you guys out. So you don't get ripped up by people trying to sell you stuff, you know? It's like the dentist. Come in every three months for a dental checkup. Yeah, do they do it free? No, if it's a free checkup, okay. But they charge you a lot of money for it. So, you know, <laughs> you can't trust people when it comes to money, you know? It's just how it works these days. So a Camry SX says, hey, I recently got a used 2016 Camry with 63,000 kilometers. My RPMs are surging up and down when I slow down and driving at slow speeds. Do my video. Make Make your car run better with a little spray cleaner. You can clean the mass airflow sensor and especially the throttle plate. The cleaner is going to cost you 13, 14 bucks for the two cans that'll last you for years. You only use a little bit up. The throttles get carbon on them, they'll do that. And if the mass airflow sensor gets dirty, it'll do that. I would also change the air filter too because that affects how the air fuel comes in. And if you got a clogged air filter, it can do that too. Probably fix it entirely from my experience. Now, if you have a little vacuum leak, it could do that too, but your car is so new for a Toyota that you generally don't get vacuum leaks when they're that new. Clean the throttle, clean the mass airflow sensor. You'll probably find the car run like a dream and you'll be thanking Scotty. Aaron Bravo says, love your channel. I got an 04 Mitsubishi Galant, 227,000 miles. It runs good, but when I have it cold before it warms up, I get a loud rattling, but when it's warm, it goes away. Will it be a problem in the future? Well, it probably will. You don't want to get rattling noises. Now, what you want to do is pinpoint that rattling noise. When it's cold, Saturday, Sunday, whatever, take the fan belts off. If the rattling goes away, you know it's something that the fan belts drive and try to grab each pulley, see if it's an alternator, water pump, something is rattling, and then fix it sooner than later. Now, if the noise is still there, the timing is probably worn, it will rattle around. The tensioner is probably not working right, but when it warms up, the oil pressure builds up, tightens it, and it doesn't rattle anymore. Eventually, the tensioner would break. So, you're better off fixing it sooner than later. Now, it is an old car. If you don't put any money into it, heck, and it goes away when it warms up, I got customers drive them years that way before something big goes. And let's face it, if you don't want to put thousands of dollars rebuilding an engine, eh, if it's not worth it, just keep driving it until the wheels fall off, and they can go years that way. But if you find it rattles all the time, even after it warms up, that's telling you it's getting near very close to the end and either get rid of it or see what you'd have to fix inside the engine. Mika 7 says, hey, I'm thinking about buying a 1995 Honda Passport EX 4x4 manual transmission with 210,000 miles. I don't know much about Hondas. What's your advice? But that's a 95. That is an ancient vehicle. Don't pay much for it. It might last a long time. I've had customers buy things like that and they drive them another eight, 10 years if they're only putting a few thousand miles a year on it. Don't pay much, you get no guarantee. And the weakest thing I know is their automatic transmission. So have that checked out good. And regardless, find a guy like me, put his high level scan tool, analyze it before you buy it. Cause you never know. I mean, what kind of shape it's in. Maybe the transmission's going out and the guy knows it. And so he wants to get rid of it. And you don't want to buy one with the tranny going out. Cause to rebuild the tranny on one of those things, you're going to spend anywhere from three to $5,000 to get it done right. Or you're going to gamble with a used transmission from a junkyard. And who knows if it's any good. You're always taking a gamble with stuff like that. Mitch Mouse says, Hey, I bought a 2000 Toyota Camry. V6 is my first car with 212,000 miles. The check engine light, VSC, and traction control light come on with the code PO356. I think it's related to the ignition coil. Should I replace the coil or the spark plug? Thanks. Here's what I'd advise you to do. Take that coil and put it on another cylinder and put the other cylinder coil on that one. Drive it. If the code switches to the coil you just moved, you know, it's the coil and you don't have to guess. And that's probably what'll happen. It's old enough that the coil's probably gone bad. But if you don't want to guess, just swap them. And then if the code moves, you know, that's it. Now, if it doesn't move, change the spark plug 
And if that doesn't fix it, it could be the fuel injector on that cylinder starting to go bad. But I know those Camrys, and after a while, the coils just go bad. So it's probably the coil. Or if you don't want to go to the bottle of switching, then just go get one at a place like AutoZone. You buy their coils, they guarantee stuff. And if it doesn't fix it, take it back, tell them, you know, it didn't work. And they'll generally give you your money back. AutoZone has a very liberal return policy. So if you don't want to do more analysis, just buy the part and put it on. If it doesn't fix it, hey, take it back and then try something else. That's the advantage of a lot of these companies now. There's so much competition that they'll let you bring stuff back even though technically they're not supposed to most of them do especially if you do a lot of business with them Dan says Scotty someone has trashed you watch this video somebody said not to trust you this guy is trusting wrong sources and not you watch this he's got this video on YouTube <laughs> I gotta say you know people have been trashing me for years I don't care I have no ulterior motive other than helping people out you know this old Scotty isn't wearing a shell oil cap isn't hawking stuff I do not do advertisements for corporations I am a mechanic. I test out tools, products. I drive all kinds of cars. I work on all kinds of cars. And I tell you guys the truth about it so you can make a wise decision when you either buy a car or want to buy a tool or want to fix something yourself or wonder, gee, is this oil good? Is this oil bad? I'm just out here to tell the truth. And of course, a lot of people are trying to sell a lot of crap. So there's a lot of people out there trashing me. The people in the Mercedes community hate me because I tell them all the problems that those cars have. And other people in the Jeep community hate me because I tell all the problems that those vehicles have. Well, I don't care, you know. I just tell my experience and my customers' experience with cars, and I pass it on. <laughs> People are always trashing me. I really don't care, you know. I find it hilarious sometimes because some of their data is just absurd, you know, because they're getting paid by companies to say certain things. I mean, back in the day when I started, when you had normal oil, you changed your oil every three, 4,000 miles. This was decades ago, right? And when I started making videos, one guy who was a mechanic got mad and said, Scotty doesn't know what he's talking about. After a thousand miles, you can see the oil is dirty. You should change your oil then. Well, I guess this guy was telling his Customers change the oil every thousand miles, and he was charging them for it. So <laughs> he got mad at me. <laughs> I said three thousand. He said no, one thousand. So I mean. People are always going to trash me. I don't care. I'm just here to help people out. And I got a thick skin. I've been on YouTube for a long time. You know. <laughs> Some of them are absolutely hilarious, though. I've seen some funny parodies of me, too. I've seen some really crappy ones that weren't even funny. But if they're funny, keep making the funny ones. I like the funny ones. But the ones that are just stupid, show a little more imagination if you want to make fun of me, not just speeding things up and having things repeat themselves. That requires very little imagination. Use more imagination. Try to impersonate me better if you want to do it. Sonny Dan says, I got a 1998 Honda Accord. With 183,000 miles, it's leaking oil. I took it to a mechanic. He changed the VTEC solenoid gasket for 95 bucks. It's still leaking. Well, I got bad news for you. It's the rear main seal of your engine. The engine itself has the rear main seal on the crankshaft. In order to change that seal, you got to pull the transmission off. You could pull the engine out too, but it's easy to pull the transmission than it is to pull the engine. But either way, it's a gigantic job. So try this. There's a company in Chicago called Automatic Transmission Products, and they make a product called ATP205 Reseal. Sometimes it's hard to find. I buy it by the case on Amazon. Pour a bottle of it in your engine, and I'll give it 200 miles to work. If it stops, great. It can rejuvenate the rubber seal, and you don't have to do anything. But if it does work, my advice, Every time you change the engine oil, add another bottle of the sealer, because it mainly leaves when you change the engine oil. AT. 205 reseal. Try it out. It's amazing stuff. I've been using it for decades and it really can rejuvenate rubber seals. Jerome L says, I'm torn between buying American and buying Japanese. I'm thinking about buying a Buick Encore or buying a Honda product. I'd like to buy American. All right. Well, you're not buying American if you're buying Buick Encore. They're made in South Korea. <laughs> <laughs> I'd buy the Honda anyways, they're much better made to begin with, but the Buick Encores are now made in South Korea, so <laughs> they're not really American made cars. You're being suckered in by a name there. It was an interesting thing that a few years ago they sold like 17,000 certain model of Buick in the United States, but they sold like 250,000 Buicks in China. But the ones they sold in China were made in China. <laughs> So don't think that your Buick Encore is an American car. It's made in South Korea, so I would definitely go Honda Civic on that one. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.